Last year I joined a support group for antisocial people. We still haven't met yet. <laughs> <laughs> that one was from Hugh. Don't forget, comment your dad jokes down below. Right, so hello again everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at this H96 Max which is said to be an 8K Ultra HD Android box. Now, an appealing thing with this box is it's very cheap, but is it worth buying, right? So that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's crack on. Right, so first of all, I want to thank Banggood for sending this out for review. And if you are interested at looking at it, I will leave links in the description down below. Right, so first of all, quickly, what do you get inside this box? You get a plug a HDMI cable, the remote, and the box itself. Now, the box, I think that looks quite clean, me. I don't know how it's meant to go, but it looks quite nice. On the front, we've got this little bit here, and it's got an LED light inside when it's turned on. On the left and right sides, it looks like there's just ventilation. Then on the back, it's got the HDMI port, a USB, power, and an AV output. If I quickly focus in, you can see it there. And then the remote is this here. It's one of these basic remotes that we see with a lot of these generic Android boxes. A good thing is with these is it does come with a mouse toggle pre-installed. But one thing I don't like is listen to this. Loud clicking that, innit? Your fingers will look like they've been on steroids after two weeks pressing that. <laughs> but let's get it started up and see what it's actually like. Right, so once we've got the box started up, what I will say is the setup is very easy. Literally, you turn it on, you don't have to sign into anything, and this is how it comes on. So that could be a positive for a lot of people. Now, on the home screen itself, as you can see, it's basic, it's clean, and there's a bit of customization on here as well. You can add and remove apps from this screen very easy, and you can also do the same at the bottom here. So there are a lot of shortcuts there. And you're going to see you've got Google Chrome, which is pre-installed. So if you want to sideload apps to this, it's going to be very easy for you to do. You've got the Google Play Store. Now, you're going to have to sign into this with your Google account, obviously, to be able to use it. But another thing is, this is going to be the mobile phone version of the Google Play Store, which might be something to know in the future. A lot of the apps on there might require you to use this mouse, so it might not be ideal for a lot of people. But, all in all, that's the home screen. Now, if I just go and play some video content on such as YouTube and see how it plays back. Now, if I load up this 4K video on YouTube here, as you can see, loads up quite nice, playing in good quality. The only thing I would say is it looks a little bit stuttery, but if I just skip into it a little bit, can just notice it's a little jumpy. But apart from that, for the price of this box, that's not bad at all. Now, if I go across to the settings, and I'm going to go to the About section, what you'll see is this is called the H96 Max M1, and it's running Android TV OS version 13. And this box has also got 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage, which may be one of the appealing parts to a lot of people, but we've got to come on to the negative shortly as well. Now, also on the home screen, as we can see at the top, you've got this, like, sweeping brush. If I click on this, it's going to do something there with a rocket. Clear 17 process, 27M. So I'm guessing it's cleared 27 processors. Not sure what. It may be apps running in the background, and it said 27 megabyte freed up. Whether that's true, I'm not sure. We'll do it again. Could do. Now, if you take a quick look at what apps are pre-installed on this, you're going to see I've not installed anything to this box. It's got Aptoid TV on there, which we all know is a great app store. It's got APK Pure. Now, one of the big downsides to these boxes is usually your Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+. Plus. They are all the mobile phone versions of the apps, so they're playing very low quality, and they're not suitable for a lot of people. So if your primary use is is for these types of apps, then this box might not be for you. But if I just add Netflix to the home screen, you're going to see that's how we do it there. This remote is really getting on my tits, honestly. But as you're going to see, I've opened up Netflix, and I'm clicking up and down here, and it doesn't seem to be registering. If I click on the mouse, and I click on Get Started... Yeah, 
and I click back, I can't do anything without the mouse. So that's one of the big downfalls, and I just wanted to demonstrate that there. Now, a good thing is if one of your main uses for an Android box is to use apps that require a mouse, these boxes aren't a bad choice. But if you want to do any sort of official streaming, then these boxes really, they're not the way to go. Right, so let's quickly go over the good points and the bad points. First of all, it's the price. This is under £22, which it is a very cheap streaming device. And the setup process is very straightforward and easy. But that's about it when it comes to the positives. Yes, you can sideload and all that sort of stuff as well. But for me, there are a lot of negatives around this as well. First of all, it's got to be the remote. Very loud. That does my head in. You could get a different remote for it, but then you're just plowing more money into it. And also, this is an IR remote, so if you point away from the box, it won't register what you're doing. You've got to point directly at the box to be able to navigate. So that could get on a lot of people's tits. Another downfall is the inability to be able to use such as your official streaming apps like Netflix, Prime Video, and that, as you saw in the video, it just becomes a ball ache, such as... When we were setting this up, first of all, I were at a friend's house and we plugged it into the TV, we weren't getting no signal, no picture. And we tried a few times, a few different power cables, HDMI cables, nothing made a difference. Plugged it into a different TV and it worked. Not sure what were happening there. But then when we were connecting it to the internet, we found that it, it was just a ball ache. We were trying to type in the password for the internet and the numbers we were pressing weren't registering. I'm not sure why. And all in all, it took us about 20 minutes to be able to get it to connect to the internet. So there's a lot of things around these boxes that can be a pain in the ass. But if you know you're going to get something that's cheap and cheerful, not everything's going to work perfect on it, then this could be something that's worth buying. But if you're somebody that gets frustrated at all, if you want something that's easy to use, and you want something where everything works on it, then this might not be the box for you. But that's just my opinions on it, so I'd be interested to know your thoughts and opinions on on this box or boxes like it in the comments section down below. If you are interested in checking it out, I will leave a link in the description down below, hopefully with a coupon to get some more money off it. But yeah, that's it for this one. That's the H96 Max M1 Android box. And yeah, so that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you soon. Ta-da!